Hey guys, welcome to the third video of our Navris Getting Started series. In this video we're going to be looking at the monitoring aspects of Navris. So this is going to be including the operating system templates and how we assign those to our devices, the alert templates and how we assign those to user groups, uh, device roles and of course how we roll out all of our alerting onto our devices across the client site all at once. Okay, so let's go and click on our settings tab here and we're going to go to OS templates. So I'm going to choose our test client just for this scenario uh, and we're going to go and edit a Windows 7 template. So the first thing that you'll see within this operating system template is the performance counters such as CPU utilization. We have SLA statuses such as warning, threat and failure. These are different tickets that will be created. We have thresholds. This is the percentage of CPU utilization. We've got these all at 100%. We've got the violation duration, so how long it's sitting at 100% the CPU. We've got clear alerts durations as well. So this is uh, how long it goes back, the CPU goes back below 100% before we decide that ticket's going to be auto closed. So once we set the performance monitors the way we want them to be, we go over to our security center. This is a really cool feature. It allows us to pull the antivirus, firewall, and anti spyware information from the Microsoft Security Center on our devices. This allows us to ensure that the services and signatures uh, for our security is up to date for our devices. Availability. So under availability we have uh, drive space utilization. Uh, you can monitor specific drives such as a C drive I'm going to choose for this one here. Uh, you can even monitor USB devices which is really cool. You can also have a ticket raised if the device stops communicating with Navrisk. Probably not for a workstation though as they get turned off. We've got several different monitored services, processes, ports, etc. I'll go into these details with the uh, device roles rather than the OS template. So let's go ahead and we'll just edit the name uh, and save that. So that's the basic idea of an OS template. Let's go back to settings now and let's go and edit one of the device roles. We're going to edit a device role for backup monitoring this time. So I'm going to choose our top level client this time and let's go and choose uh, the backup exec server. So device roles are a little bit more complex than operating system templates. Device roles are used to monitor specific things such as services. For example, the backup exec agent browser service that tells me that if it stops for 60 seconds will receive a threat ticket. So by clicking on this green edit button, we can fill out details such as a display name, service name, notify when, for example, a restart fails of the service. So we can set a threshold of three, which means that Navris will try and restart the service if it can't three times it will raise a ticket. You can even pull service information from a selected source device as well. So we can see all the services are running on the site controller agent right at this very moment. Navrisk also has the ability to monitor a specific process whether it's started or stopped. A little bit different to monitoring a service. In this instance we have to add the display name and the process name and then we can save our changes. It's also important that we're able to monitor ports, so Navris can do that. For the address, we can either use a URL, what I'm using here, or an IP address. This gives me the ability to monitor server 2 from server 1, it might be a web server, and just make sure that the, uh, the website does not go down. So as you can see here, we're going to be polling port 80 uh, every 20 seconds for failure threshold of 3, which means if the port goes down for a minute, we'll be alerted for that. Monitored events, probably one of the most important features uh, for Navarisk. We can monitor any kind of event. Uh, so the main things we'll be looking for is the event ID and the event source. So for example, for backup exec, we're going to be monitoring this specific event ID. The event type is going to be an error, which means that backup exec has not performed correctly. Now if you guys are wondering where I got the event source and the event ID information, I actually pulled this from the Microsoft event logs from one of my machines. Now we can make this event monitor a timed event, which means that if this hasn't been raised within a specific time period, a ticket will be created. Navrisk also has the ability to monitor file or folder paths. So for example, if I wanted to monitor the folder path for my backup exec backup system, um, I can look for things in the comparison, such as if the file is younger than or smaller than. In, instant, in this instance, I'll choose larger than, and we can say the value is 5 gigs. So if this file becomes larger than 5 gigs, we can have a failure ticket created in Navarisk so we can go and check that file out. So I'll go ahead and save that uh, change there, but this is not how I want my device roll set up. So remember, over on the right hand side, we can always delete 
uh, anything that we've created that we don't need within our device role. So now on to the last part of our device role, which is monitor script packs. Now monitored script packs gives you the ability to attach a script to a device role and enable that script to be run every 30 seconds or so on that device. This feature in Navrisk is incredibly useful when you are trying to monitor software that does not write to the Windows event logs. So the first drop down you guys will see here is of course the script packs. Now these are loaded under settings, script packs. I will have documentation handy in this video so you can actually see how to set that up. And the next box is the parameters of course. Now these are pertaining to the script pack itself. It could be anything. It could be a command as part of the script pack. For me it's going to be the definition. So I've got the parameters as 3 equals to days. Uh, time to recheck. I'm going to have this 24 hours. The SLA class will put as backup because of course that's what our device rolls for. Uh, status, we're going to put this as a warning. That's the type of ticket I want created if the definitions uh, fall outside 3 days. Let's put in a ticket trigger text as well so that's going to be the title of our ticket we'll go ahead and save that and that's how we monitor script packs through Navrisk now I don't need to actually monitor a script pack for this role so I'm going to go ahead and remove this one so yep yeah, so we've got our backup exec server role I'm just gonna make sure that so we say it was edited we're gonna go and save this role ready to be dispatched to our devices so there we have it our edited uh, backup exec server device role so back under settings, we're going to be looking at alert templates, but before we do that, we're just going to quickly go into users and groups, because this is where the alert template actually starts. So under our top level client here, if I go in the, and show you one of these groups, so we've got a, a server management group, see how we've got myself in there, and I'll also add Tony and Solomon. I'm also going to see who's now support group, because we're going to use this group uh, for the alerting profile of our workstation so we're going to add Tony in and we'll add Karthik in as well as myself so go and save those changes and we're ready to go back on under settings and uh, go into our alert templates now remember a user has an email address added to them as you would have seen in our second video so a user is added to a group and then a group is added to an alert template which is what we're going to do now um, we can also set uh, default alerts for specific clients so we can have uh, a ticket only on new agent installation, new agent that pops into Navrisk. Yeah, so we'll add these groups to an alert template. So when an alert comes in, the information is going to go through to that group, the users of that group, the users in that group will receive an email about the alert. So the first set of boxes here that I'm going to highlight is to do with alert frequency. So I've put 30 minutes in here, which means that when a ticket sits unassigned, uh, a specific group, so we'll choose a server group, they'll receive an email every 30 minutes until that ticket gets assigned to a technician. We can do the same for the threat SLAs and the warning SLAs. Now remember, these SLAs are pertaining to the tickets themselves. So I'm going to go ahead and just add our server group for our server monitoring alert template. Escalate after. This group could be a management group. They'll receive an email uh, in, say, for example, 40 minutes if the ticket still hasn't been assigned to a technician. So management can see that this uh, is outside of its SLA for ticket assignment. So we're going to go and add in our times here. Uh, of course, the times are going up per SLA since uh, warning SLAs aren't as important as failures. We're just going to go and add our full user rights here or our management group. So the next set we have here is a remind after. Remind after is pertaining to tickets that have been assigned to a technician, but the technician hasn't updated the ticket within a certain time. So I've bit here 14, 14 minutes, which is 24 hours. So if the ticket's not updated within 24 hours, then we can have our management team receive an email to say, hey, can you remind the technician to look at their tickets? So now that we've added all of our timestamps and all of the groups that we want, we're going to go and save this template because our server monitoring template is ready to be added to our servers. So there we have it. So there's our server monitoring template already saved. We're going to create a new template now. This one's going to be for workstations. And we're going to set this template in a way that is only going to be sending us uh, alerts at a specific time period because of course workstations aren't on all the time they're usually on from say 9 to 5 uh, you know during the weekdays so as you can see I'm already setting my times in here already my my low frequency times we're going to add our support group uh, as a target user group for these so I've kind of skipped ahead quickly just to speed up the video a bit so I'm just going to add my full user rights and finish this off um, just adding the last part of our, our groups in for the remind users
And then what we're going to do is, as you can see here, I've highlighted the first two boxes. Just to remind you, the first two boxes are in regards to unassigned tickets. Now, I'm filling out the info boxes are most important because these are going to be pertaining to clients' emails coming into our service desk. So we want these to be signed within 30 minutes and escalated to a management team if no one's picked up in 40 minutes. Now for the alert periods, we're going to set these to be weekdays and weekends. So again, I've kind of skipped ahead in the video just to get these times sorted out. So we've got 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, Monday to Friday for our alerting. Once our templates are set, so we've got our two templates, we're going to go over to settings, and we're going to deploy everything via our device types. So remember, early in the video, we did the OS templates and device roles for our servers under NavDemo2 for our workstation under test client. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add everything to our server systems, our Windows server systems, for Navris Demo 2. So let's click on the green edit button for our Windows servers and if we scroll down we've got our roles here. So let's go find our backup exec role, backup exec service, that's the one we edited there. So we're going to add this in for all of our, our server systems. Uh, the alert template, so we're going to be choosing our server monitoring that we set up and we're going to save this. So now that we've set up everything for our server monitoring on NavDemo2, let's go over to our test client now and we're going to set up our OS templates and monitoring for our workstations. So we're just going to drill down under the uh, Windows workstations here and let's go find our Windows 7 machines. And you'll notice that the edited Windows 7 OS template that we change has automatically been updated for all of our Windows 7 machines. So that's one of the cool things about Navaris because if we change things like that, Navaris can automatically pick it up and uh, update our devices for that. So I've just gone back up into all workstations just so we can add in our support alerts template that we set up before as well. So we're going to add that to all of our workstations and save that. So basically that's our deployment all done, ready to go, and all of our systems have been set up for monitoring. So just as a bit of a side note, we're going to go back to devices and we're going to go to our test client and we're going to go to my device which is a Windows 7 device. Now the reason why we're doing this is I want to show you how we can set these monitoring aspects for a singular device that's not going to affect all the other devices on our network. So as you can see from the available template added to my device, it's from the device types we just set up. What we're going to do is we're going to click on copy to device we're going to overwrite this and we're going to make it a device specific template. That means that I can change all of the performance counters and all of the availability counters that I want without any of the other Windows 7 devices under NavDemo2 under our test client uh, being affected. So this method of monitoring is really handy if we want to make specific monitoring changes to uh, one of our devices such as if we want to monitor a different drive to all the other devices or even change the security monitoring. The other thing we can do here is we can attach specific roles for a device that perhaps the other devices don't have. So these are all listed here uh, from the roles that we created earlier if you remember. So I can add in uh, my different antivirus roles or backup or exec agent roles or anything like that. Okay, so there we have it guys. That's our basic idea of monitoring and alerting through Navrisk. Our next video we're going to be looking at our patching and scheduling. Uh, again, this was a bit of a long video because it is quite a bit to explain around the monitoring with Navrisk. Thanks for watching.